Welcome to the spoken tutorial on calling user-defined functions in Xcos. In this tutorial, we will learn to write a squaring function in Scilab, to use the scifunc block in Xcos, to use mux block to draw multiple plots, to call functions having multiple inputs and outputs. Ubuntu 12.04 is the operating system used with Scilab version 5.3.3 installed. You should have basic knowledge of Scilab, basic knowledge of Xcos. If not, for relevant tutorials, please visit spoken-tutorial.org. Start Scilab on your computer. In the Scilab console, type editor and press enter. Then type the following code, function space y is equal to square it, open bracket a, close bracket. Press enter key and type y is equal to a raised to 2. Put a semicolon in the end. The function has one input variable a and one output variable y. The name of the function is square it. This function will do the job of squaring the variable a. It will store the result in y. Let us save this file in the desired directory. I will save this file with the file name square it and extension .sci. Here we are following the convention of saving functions in .sci format. Switch to the Scilab console. Now type Xcos and press enter. Two windows will open. A palette browser and an untitled Xcos window. Now we will make the Xcos diagram. This will access the function square it created just now. This can be done by using the scifunc block. Switch to the palette browser window. Click on the user defined functions. In the palette browser, locate the block scifunc underscore block underscore m in this section. Drag and drop it in the untitled Xcos window. I will zoom the untitled Xcos window for better view. I will use the zoom button as you see. Now double click the scifunc block to configure it. A window named scilab multiple value request will open. This window will allow you to change the number of input and output ports of the scifunc block. Our function square it has only one input and output variable. Hence, we will keep the settings unchanged. Click on OK. The new scilab input value request window will open. In the text box, type the function name along with the input and output variable. This function will be called by the scifunc block. In the text box available, edit the default function name. Type y1 is equal to square it, open bracket, u1, close the bracket. Note that here the input and output variables are u1 and y1 respectively. These should be strictly in u and y form and not as per the variable names used in the actual function. Click on OK. Another Scilab input value request window will open. Keep clicking on OK in the subsequent three windows that will appear. The siphon block is now configured. Next, we will include a sinusoid generator block. In the palette browser window, click on sources section. Drag and drop the sinusoid generator block in the untitled Xcos window. Place the block towards the left of the siphon block for convenience. Now we need a block to plot the output variable. In the palette browser window, click on the sinks section. Drag and drop the cscope block in the untitled Xcos window. Place the block towards the right of the siphon block. Place it away from the siphon block for convenience. Notice that the cscope block has a red input port. This is an event input. We need an event generator block. In the palette browser window, click on sources section. Drag and drop the clock underscore c block 
in the untitled XCOS window. Place it above the C-scope block. Notice that the C-scope block has only one input port. But we want to plot the input and output variables in a single plot window. Hence, we need a multiplexer block. This block will multiplex two inputs and generate output on one output port. In the palette browser window, click on signal routing section. Drag and drop the MUX block in the untitled XCOS window. Place the block between the Cyfunk block and the C-scope block. Let me resize and realign the MUX block. Now, let us connect the blocks together. Connect the output port of sinusoid generator block to the input port of Cyfunk block. Now, connect the output port of the Cyfunk block to the lower input port of the MUX. Connect the output port of the MUX block to the input port of C-scope block. Connect the output port of clock underscore C block to the event input port of the C scope block. We also have to plot the sign input. We have to connect the sinusoid generator block to the MUX. Click on the upper input port of the MUX block. Then without releasing, move your mouse pointer towards the link between the sinusoid generator block and the Cyfunk block. To bend the link, release the mouse button or click at places. As you bring the pointer on the link, the link turns green. Release the mouse button or click once to create a link between these two blocks. Now, let us see the configuration of other blocks. We can change the frequency, magnitude and phase of the sinusoid generator block. To do this, double click on the sinusoid generator block. The configuration window will open. We will keep the magnitude and frequency as 1 and phase as 0. Click on OK to close the configuration window. Now let us configure the C-scope block. Double click on the C-scope block to open its configuration window. Change the Y-min parameter to minus 2 and Y-max parameter to 2. Change the refresh period value to 10. Make a mental note of this value. Change the buffer size value to 2. Click on OK. Now let us configure the clock underscore C block. Double click on the block to open its configuration window. Keep the value of period as 0.1. Change the initialization time to be 0. Click on OK. Now, let us change the simulation parameters. On the menu bar of the untitled XCOS window, click on the simulation tab. Now, click on the setup from the drop-down menu. Change the final integration time to match the refresh period of the C-scope block. The value of refresh period was 10. Hence, put the value of final integration time as 10. Click on OK. Now click on File and then click on Save to save the XCOS diagram. Choose a desired directory to save the XCOS diagram. However, it is advised to save it in the folder where you have saved the squareit.sci file. Click on OK. Note that the Cyfunk block will call the squareit function. This means that we should first load the square it function before we execute the XCOS diagram. Switch to the Scilab editor window, which has the square it.sci file open. Click on the execute button available on the menu bar of the editor. This will load the square it function. Now we can execute the XCOS diagram. Open the XCOS diagram file. Click on the Start button available on the menu bar of the XCOS window. A graphic window will appear. This window will have two plots, input sine wave in black color and output sine wave in green color. Notice that the squaring function implemented in the square it function has indeed squared the input sine wave. Hence, the output sine wave has been shifted to the positive axis. 
close the plot window. Now let us see how to edit the scifunc block. To call a function which has more than one input and output variables, switch to the scilab editor window. Edit the square it function to have two input and output variables. Edit the output variable as open square bracket y comma z. Close the square bracket. Edit the input variable as open bracket a comma b. Close the bracket. We will change the function to shift the squared output by one unit. Edit the main function line as y is equal to b plus a raised to two. Put a semicolon in the end. Also generate an output whose amplitude will be half of the input. Go to the next line by pressing Enter key and type z is equal to 0.5 multiplied by a. Put a semicolon in the end. Now save the file. Switch to the Xcos window. Double click on the scifunc block to configure it. In the input port size field, put a semicolon after 1 comma 1 and type 1 comma 1 again. Similarly, in the output port size field, put a semicolon after 1 comma 1 and type 1 comma 1 again. Click on OK. A new Scilab input value request window will open. In the text box, put a comma after y1 and type y2. Put y1 and y2 in square brackets. Now put a comma after u1 and type u2. Click on OK. Another Scilab input value request window will open. Keep clicking on OK in the subsequent three windows that will appear. The siphon block is now configured. Let me realign the siphon block. Switch to the palette browser window. In the sources section, drag and drop the constant underscore m block in the xcos window. Place it below the sinusoid generator block. Connect the constant underscore m block to the lower input of the siphon block. The default value of this block is 1. Keep it unchanged. Double click on the MUX block. Change the input port size to 3. Click on OK. Let me resize the MUX block and I will connect the MUX and CSCO block properly. Connect the lower output port of SIFUNC block to the lower input port of MUX block. Click on File and choose Save to save the XCOS file. Switch to the Scilab editor, which has the squareit.sci file open. Click on Execute button, available on the menu bar of the editor. This will load the squareit function. Now we can execute the XCOS diagram. Click on the Start button, available on the menu bar of the XCOS window. A graphic window will appear. This window will have three plots, input sine wave in black color, output sine wave in green color and amplitude scaled input in red color. Notice that the function has indeed squared the input sine wave and also shifted it by offset of one unit, which is as expected. We also get the amplitude scaled of the input sine wave as expected. Close the plot window. Now let us summarize. In this tutorial, we learned to write a squaring function in Scilab, to use Scifunc block in Xcos, to use Mux block to draw multiple plots, to call functions having multiple inputs and outputs. Watch the video available at the following link. It summarizes the spoken tutorial project. If you do not have good bandwidth, you can download and watch it. The Spoken Tutorial project team conducts workshops using Spoken Tutorials, gives certificates for those who pass an online test. For more details, please write to contact at spoken-tutorial.org. Spoken Tutorial project is a part of Talk to a Teacher project. 
It is supported by the National Mission on Education through ICT, MHRD, Government of India. More information on this mission is available at spoken-tutorial.org slash nmeict hyphen intro. Thank you for joining. Hope you found this tutorial useful. This is Anuradha Amritkar from IIT Bombay signing off. Goodbye.